you don't need a lab with chemicals and knowledge in biology or physics to do cool experiments. All you need is your thoughts. Let's do three thought experiments on our perception and see where they can lead us. So the first experiment is called Mary's Room. Imagine a woman named Mary. She's a professor of biology, medicine, and physics. All her life, she's been studying color and its perception. She knows how we see colors. Let's quickly find that out too. Every physical object on Earth has the property of absorbing light. Imagine a red apple. The apple's surface absorbs some light when sun rays fall on it. The rest of the light is reflected from the object. The length of the reflected light waves indicates the object's color to our brain. So different wavelengths determine the colors that we see. The amount of reflected light and the length of its waves depend on the object's physical properties. Then these waves get into our eyes. Through the pupil and retina, they reach a tiny point on the back of the eyeball. This little spot, called the fovea centralis, accommodates about 6 or 7 million cones. These cones are photoreceptors, tiny retinal cells. And we have three types of them. More than half of the cones react to red, about a third react to green, and only 2% react to blue. All the other colors we see are a mixture of these three types of waves. When the light reflected from the apple gets into the fovea centralis, it stimulates the cones. Then, these photoreceptors transmit the signal to the optic nerve, which goes to the brain. The organ processes the information, and we see the red color. All this happens instantly and constantly, except for when we sleep or are in the dark. Great, now you know how vision works. So let's get back to Mary. She knows everything about color. But the problem is that she lives in a black and white room. She's never seen green trees, blue sky, or colored objects. The world is like a black and white film for her. Now imagine that a red apple appears on her computer screen. The question is, will she be able to learn anything new about this color? Or will the red apple be nothing special to her thanks to all her knowledge about colors? Are there some properties of objects in the universe that can be understood only empirically? That is, with the help of personal experience? Philosophers call it the knowledge argument. This concept is opposed to the theory of physicalism, according to which all states and things in the universe have a physical explanation. We know that stars, clouds, temperature, pressure, and matter have a physical explanation. But what about the state of mind? Can we explain and describe the feelings that a person experiences when they see the ocean for the first time? If a person knows what it is and has seen it in a picture, will they receive some new knowledge when they first come to the shore? And what kind of knowledge will it be? Another example. If we know all the features of another person's brain, their character and reactions to the things surrounding them, Will we really be able to understand what it's like to be that person? The Mary's Room experiment describes only the perception of color, but implies each person's subjective experience. Yes, we know what love is, but all people may perceive this feeling differently. They describe it in their own words. The same applies to feelings of joy, boredom, itchiness, or having a headache. This unique personal experience has qualia, a set of subjective properties that can't be described. It seems evident that Mary gets a new inexplicable experience and knowledge when she sees a red apple for the first time. But some philosophers disagree with this. In their opinion, the experience Mary gets when she looks at the apple corresponds to the mental state she received when learning about colors in the black and white world. That is, she won't learn anything new. Her impression of the red color and receiving information about it will cause the same signals in the brain that can be measured. There are no incomprehensible qualia that are beyond physical explanation. To try to answer this question, let's do another thought experiment called Brain in a Vat. So, imagine an ordinary guy who drives a car, watches sunsets, plays video games, hangs out with friends, and eats in restaurants. This guy gets into the laboratory of an evil scientist who puts him to sleep. 
The scientist extracts the guy's brain and puts it in a special vat where thousands of sensors get connected to all sides of the brain. The sensors are also connected to a computer that thoroughly scans the organ. The scientist can see on the screen all the brain's neurons responsible for perceiving the surrounding world. For example, he spots which brain areas are activated when the guy plays video games. And then, the scientist stimulates these neurons through the computer. The sensors signal to the brain that it's playing video games. And according to the guy's reaction, he seems to be really doing it. And now, the question is, is there a difference between the brain's reaction to the real world and the reaction that the computer evokes? You're watching this video right now. How do you know that this is really true? What if some computer is giving your brain signals that make you feel your body and see the screen where this video is playing? Suppose all perception can be reproduced through such a computer. In that case, qualia don't exist, and all things in the universe can be explained with the help of knowledge. But it's impossible to prove anything in this experiment because people haven't yet invented a computer capable of reading all the brain signals and understanding how it works. However, if we could study the brain 100%, we would be able to recreate this organ. In this case, a fully-fledged artificial intelligence would appear in the world. But considering all modern technologies, it doesn't seem real yet. Artificial intelligence may never be able to reach the level of human consciousness. And the Chinese room experiment can convince you of this. You're in a room without windows or doors. There's only one tiny gap leading into another room. Inside the room, there are two shelves with books. One shelf has books in Chinese, while the second shelf has documents with instructions in English. You don't know Chinese, but you speak English fluently. The instructions state that you will now correspond in Chinese with someone from the other room. The rules are simple. They slip a piece of paper with Chinese words through the gap, and you write the answer in Chinese based on the instructions in English. So, a letter gets into the room. You have no idea what's written there. So you look at the instructions that tell you how to respond to these symbols. You write the words in Chinese according to the instructions and return the letter through the gap. Then another piece of paper appears in the room and you do the same. Thanks to clear instructions, you can reply to any message in Chinese, even though you don't actually know Chinese. The person in the other room is fluent in Chinese. They mistakenly believe that you speak Chinese perfectly because of your answers. This experiment shows that artificial intelligence can process information and pretend to understand everything when you communicate with it. However, it merely follows instructions. These instructions are vast arrays of data that it compares and processes. The person in the Chinese room can answer questions perfectly due to the instructions, making the other person believe they understand Chinese. However, this person has no idea what they're actually saying. They're simply following the instructions. In this case, how can artificial intelligence become aware of itself and understand what it's doing if it merely follows instructions given by humans? Moreover, how can we provide it with a description of consciousness and instructions on how to utilize it? Just consider how challenging it would be to explain consciousness to a machine. That's why achieving human-level consciousness is unlikely to happen soon for artificial intelligence. <laughs>